Hi there, today we're going to talk about using a viewfinder. So um, I've got my viewfinder here and you'll notice that it has a dot. Your viewfinder has a dot in the middle of it. So what we're going to do is we need to find three compositions that show balance of negative and positive spaces and shapes. We want to see balance in uh, light and dark areas. So, and we also want our objects to touch at least three sides of our picture plane. And this is our picture plane. Okay, so everything inside is here is your picture plane. So we want to touch at least three edges of the picture plane. These are the edges. Okay, um, shadows also count as objects that can touch the edge of your picture plane. So they are shapes, just like the cups, and if your shadows are also touching the edge of your picture plane, that will work. So um, I think I will uh, make a sketch of this. Now I'm not going to take photographs because mm -hmm. um, Photographs, first of all, it's hard to keep your viewfinder straight up and down while you're trying to take a photograph. You need these edges to be square. So we're going to do it without taking any pictures. And it's actually going to work out better than taking pictures because pictures distort your image. And like I said, it's hard to take the picture and keep this thing upright. So now in your sketchbook, you're going to trace the template that I gave you three times so that you can make three thumbnail sketches. So let's say this is your sketchbook page. Okay, you can hold it any way you want for the sketch. So in other words, you can hold your picture plane like this. You can hold your picture plane like this. All right. So I traced this template, I'm going to trace it three times, and inside of here, I'll draw what I'm seeing inside of here. So in order to do that, I need to take note of where my objects touch the, picture, the edges of the picture plane. So I would, this is about halfway, so I know the top of this cup comes in about halfway. I'm going to mark it. A little dot halfway here. Another thing, in order to keep your um, viewfinder in the same spot each time, notice this little black dot and always put that black dot back in the exact same place every time you hold your picture plane up. Okay. So um, another thing I guess I could notice is that my shadow touches almost the corner down here. So I'll make another little mark down at the corner down here for where that touches. I'm lining up my uh, dot in the same place it was the last time. I could make a note of where the edge of the table or this white paper touches the picture plane right there. I'm going to make a mark on my, in my sketchbook. I'm going to make a mark on this side as well. And then it's a matter of seeing the negative and positive shapes. Remember how we did the exercise for the negative and positive shapes, and this dark area here is one big shape. This dark area over here is one big shape. And you can use your sighting techniques as well to calculate the angles that you're seeing, the relative um, proportions of things, so like the side of this cup is about the same length as the top of this negative space here.
So from here to here is about the same space as from here to here, and it's also about the same as from here to here. So use your sighting to calculate the angles of the cups. Remember how to draw an ellipse. There's no pointy edges on the ellipse, so this is rounded. Don't forget your negative spaces right like here and in here. That's very helpful to help you draw the positive shapes, okay? So start mapping out your drawing very lightly, okay? And when you get it the way you think you like it, then double check it and then you can start to shade it, but keep it very light. Keep it light until you get it right, okay? So um, very lightly until you've got the whole composition worked out using just um, contour lines, okay? We're not doing any shading, just very light contour lines. When you do start shading, you're gonna depend mostly on your tonal value to make your cups look three-dimensional and to pop, okay? Tonal value, you're not using a lot of heavy lines. As a matter of fact, try to avoid lines altogether and let your cups you kind know, of emerge from the background using um, your tonal value. You can use whatever pencil techniques you want. However, I think that if you covered your whole paper in your finished drawing with graphite first and use some of those rendering techniques in addition to some uh, hatching or whatever else you want to use, it will go faster and you'll get that tone down. So look at what is the darkest part of my drawing. Up here, that's gonna be your black area up in here. It's dark in here as well. So like I said, you need a full range of tonal value. It looks like the center here is the lightest area. So only a very few areas are white, 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 and everything else has tonal value. And a few areas are really dark as well. And so you need to draw this background so that your cups will, will um, contrast with the background and they'll look more three-dimensional and they'll pop out from the picture plane. Okay, so three different thumbnail sketches. This is my first one and you can select another one Maybe something like uh, this. Maybe I want to even move to a different part of the table. Something like that, maybe. All right. So. Enjoy.